What if you could survive for centuries, frozen solid inside a block of ice? Science fiction loves this idea. From cryo-sleeping astronauts to superheroes waking up decades later, we've seen it in Captain America, Futurama, even Prometheus. But how much of it is science? And how much is just wishful thinking in a deep freeze? Could cryonics really be a doorway to the future? Or is it just a frosty fantasy dressed as hope? So, what actually happens to your body when it freezes? First, the water inside your cells begins to freeze. But as it turns to ice, it expands, forming sharp crystals that shred cell membranes like tiny daggers. One by one, your cells rupture. Organs fail. Tissues fracture. Your body becomes a sculpture of biological ice. Stunning to look at, utterly lifeless within. On the outside, you might pass for a snow queen. But on the inside, you're a deep freeze disaster. So why can't we just freeze a human and bring them back later? The problem lies deep in our biology. When tissues freeze, ice crystals rupture cells. But some tissues are especially fragile. Your nervous system? Gone. Muscles? Shredded. The brain? Let's just say, not coming back in one piece. Now, to be fair, science has made progress. We can successfully freeze and thaw certain cells. Blood, sperm, eggs, even embryos. But that's a far cry from cryopreserving an entire human body intact and alive. Scaling up from a single cell to seven trillion of them. That's not a technical challenge. That's science fiction. As one scientist famously said, if you freeze the whole body, it's not a pause. It's a permanent screenshot. Looks cool. Works never. All right. Let's say you do freeze yourself. What happens when someone tries to thaw you out? Spoiler alert. It's not like defrosting a pizza. If the body warms up too quickly, tissues crack and collapse. If it warms too slowly, ice crystals keep tearing through what's left of your cells. Either way, what follows isn't resurrection. It's rot. Without circulation or repair, your organs begin to break down. Inflammation kicks in, followed by necrosis. The charming process of cellular death and decomposition. In short, you go from frosty to funky in record time. Let's just say the before and after shot would not make a great sales pitch. Now, freezing the whole human body might be science fiction, but freezing parts of it, that's already science fact. Cryopreservation is a real and widely used technology. We freeze sperm, eggs, embryos, even slices of tissue and small organs. In some cases, this gives people a second chance at life. But then there's cryonics, the dream of preserving the entire body until science can fix death itself. Around the world, hundreds of people have already taken the plunge. Legally dead, frozen in tanks of liquid nitrogen, waiting for a future that might never come. The tech is experimental. The price tag? Astronomical. But for some, the hope is worth every penny. After all, what's a few hundred thousand dollars compared to eternity, even if freezing the body did work? Big questions remain. What is consciousness? And could it really survive in a frozen brain? If someone brings your body back, but your mind is gone, is that still you? 
Who decides when to wake you up? Who pays to keep your tank cold for centuries? And let's be honest, would the future even want you back? In the end, cryonics isn't just about science. It's a mirror reflecting our deepest fear, the fear of death. It's the fantasy that time can be paused, that we can leap over the unknown and land safely in a better tomorrow. But for now, it remains just that, a beautiful, chilling dream. So ask yourself, is it worth freezing your life for a future that never asked for you?